What has happened is that we are now generating significant uh, revenues from offshore oil and mineral resources, uh, and the province has moved from an economic situation in which once we were described as a have-not province dependent on transfer payments from the federal government in order to even out those regional economic disparities. We are now a uh, have-province in the sense that we are not uh, dependent on those uh, at this time. But... At the same time, we have shifted from dependence on uh, other resources, fish and forest in particular. We're now uh, increasingly dependent on um, offshore petroleum. You see from the graph here uh, and the numbers, in 1999, two years after the first oil flowed from uh, uh, offshore Newfoundland, the uh, petroleum contributed uh, 12% to our gross domestic product. 2007, just before the uh, recession, which we survived remarkably well, I have to say, that contribution uh, to GDP was up to 35%. We're becoming increasingly dependent on those revenues. Will we find more oil? Will we, find, will we be able to maintain uh, an economy based on that particular resource? Who knows? Dependence on resources is a dangerous thing. One of the things that's happened, of course, is that there have been tremendous uh, spatial variations in those benefits. Most of the benefits from those offshore fields uh, on the Grand Banks have accrued to the St. John's urban area. The rural areas have fared much less well. Fishery has uh, been in a very difficult state and uh, uh, mostly because of uh, uh, local issues of management, in part because of uh, global competition. The forest industry has virtually collapsed because of a changing demands for, uh, for newsprints. newsprint. What we see are some contradictions in the local situation in that we have very high unemployment and yet at the same time there's not enough labour uh, to perform certain sorts of skills in, in particular areas. We have labour shortages. We have this uh, uh, lack of opportunity in the province and consequence this significant amount of out-migration on a temporary basis and yet not enough people at home to perform the tasks that we, uh, we need those uh, construction workers for and as a consequence uh, that distorts the uh, prices in the local economy. Is the economic growth that we have experienced over the last uh, decade sustainable? Have the fundamentals of the economy changed? We've shifted the basis for our economy, but we still see that the more things change, the more they remain the same. Hence my uh, uh, subtitle. Major issues we have are with uh, our demography and the uh, labour force in terms of shortages. Like you, we have serious difficulties in uh, providing services to the smaller rural areas uh, at uh, reasonable cost, and we uh, are significantly dependent on one, at the moment, uh, major uh, resource, and very limited uh, diversity of the economy. I ask you wh to what extent these questions are similar in this region, what are the intractable issues that face the Nora region? In our case, I think economic dependence, and geography and service provision, and demography are key. You may not be at the point where demography is such a key issue at the moment, but uh, it didn't take very long for things to change in Newfoundland and Labrador. Once upon a time, when I, uh, 25, 30 years ago, we had the highest birth rates in uh, Canada. Now we are by far the lowest. It doesn't take long to change. Looking forward, the Conference Board of Canada uh, published a report at the end of last year which suggested that uh, this is the, uh, these are the opportunities for northern Canada, including Newfoundland and Labrador. The primary industry focus, oil and gas, fishing, forestry, etc., the enabling industries, utilities and construction, emerging industries, tourism, and non-commercial services, which are absolutely essential, education and health. 
When I read the, uh, the Nora uh, review, perhaps the only one that is not there is health. Uh, that may be a, a question uh, that we can come back to uh, later. These are the opportunities. Can we take advantage of these opportunities in our area? Well, there are some fundamental difficulties. If we take just two, minerals. The aging workforce means to say that we have significant retirements in the minerals mining sector. Uh, there will be a significant, there is already a significant labour shortfall that will increase. That will only get worse. If we take the construction sector, exactly the same kind of uh, problem in that uh, uh, there's a serious labour shortage. That may not be the issue in this region to the same extent, but... What I hear from that report is that we have an ageing workforce, we have uh, uh, a workforce with, or uh, areas in which workforce may not be available for these same kinds of uh, activities. Lots of similarities in terms of development possibilities. Demographic differences at the moment, for sure. But I think we have the same sort of problem. Who is going to be in those smaller, rural, more peripheral places to create or fill those new opportunities. It's a human capital issue. Who is going to be there to fill those jobs? The emphasis in, the, in our own context and in the NORA report is on place-based development. Can we maintain, can we sustain those rural places? One of the questions that we are constantly asking ourselves is what will the geography of our region look like in the future, the medium term? And one of the questions that I think that we keep coming back to, given our uh, uh, particular situation, is that we may be trying to maintain a historical geography a historical geography that's based primarily on a, uh, a former fishing industry, which is no longer relevant to today's needs. It may not be sustainable. We have had, and I really wish you luck in this regard, we've had very limited success in diversifying our economy. It's a very, there's no magic bullets, it's a very difficult process. Everybody is, is fully aware of that. But the diversification that has occurred has mostly strengthened the urban rather than the smaller places. We have been unable to essentially reverse that process of, uh, uh, that long-term process of out-migration. At best, we could... Uh, see a, uh, a horizontal line for uh, population, limited population growth. This is in perhaps contrary to uh, uh, Lawrence Smith's uh, view of the, the north. Uh, I don't see this happening in, in our particular area. I think our future is one of a new geography. And we need to... Uh, uh, examine what that new geography is and therefore where our investments, where our focus needs to be in the future. What we see is, in, uh, sorry, what I see, I have to say that quite clearly here. What I believe is that there has been a significant lack of debate in our area, a lack of public debate at least, on the forces which are currently shaping uh, change and the policies which are designed either to address that or to influence those kinds of changes. I think it's wonderful that this event is occurring here because this is the sort of debate that needs to go on and it needs to go on in the communities as well as uh, with the uh, um, uh, uh, decision makers uh, like yourselves. We have not been particularly successful in trying to achieve many of the sorts of objectives that you have identified, that have been identified in this report. I sincerely hope that you are successful. I sincerely hope that uh, we can in the future collaborate 
uh, and perhaps we can take as much from this exercise uh, as you. I do believe that this is a, a tremendous opportunity to uh, move forward. I just am a little pessimistic uh, about uh, the chances of success in those fundamental areas which mean keeping people at home. That's a very, very difficult task. I wish you luck. Thank you.